Hello. I'm here to speak to you about the legend of data liberation. It is a, it's an important story. It's a story about society. It's a story about people. It's a story about geeks. And it's a story about government. Of course, I am not representing any of the government people that I work for out here tonight. So, um, but I do think I believe I represent a, a new um, generation of public servant that will you know, transform things. But by the by, most people, when they think of government, think of garbage. Uh, they think about, you know, what is it this entity does for us? They take out our garbage, they build our roads, they build our education. But uh, what's happening is that the internet is leading to a, a, a period of discontentment. People are more empowered than we've ever been before. And we're seeing government make mistakes like the New South Wales uh, transport issue. And we're just going, come on, we can do this better. So what's starting to happen is people want the data. We want access to, uh, we're seeing a new... Uh, thing that's been called Gov 2.0. I know 2.0 is stupid. We are all web people, right? But um, it's around transparency, participation, and citizen-focused approach to government, right? I'm going to run through these three things very, uh, very quickly. Um, transparency in the first instance is about raw data. You need access to the raw materials to make new and interesting things. Uh, it's one thing to have someone say to you, you know, the, the water is rising, but it's another thing to actually have information over the last 200 years about how much it's rising and be able to do your own analysis. Uh, having access to the raw data means that we can better trust the outcomes. I mean, how would it be if, you know, we got the outcome of elections but didn't have the capacity to, um, you know, have scrutineers and have people look at the raw information? We need raw data to be able to trust outcomes and to be able to provide our own analysis. Analysis is a really important part of what we get when we get access to raw data. Um, we need access to economic data, environment data, biological data, uh, demographic, government. Um, the Human Genome Project, who's heard of that? Come on, a few people. I met the guy who actually runs that project um, very recently. It was very cool. I also met Hans Rosling. It was very cool. But another type of um, transparency that's important is actually parliamentary transparency. So the Italian government actually has a, a, a huge uh, a, a glass roof to let the sunshine in. Cool idea. Then they covered it up. Not so cool. Really good metaphor, though, for the fact that people want access to the information so that they can participate in the democracy, they can participate in the policy, they can participate in the process. If people aren't able to get information, then they're not able to get educated, they're not able to have an informed view, they're not able to participate effectively. So basically where we're going is a, a period of time where how government operates is it actually starts to co-develop the policy with the people. Because, you know, there's a lot of skills out there. There's a lot of us that know stuff that can contribute to making government do things better. So why wouldn't they talk to us? Well, it's not because they're bad or evil and nefarious, generally speaking. It's usually just because it's not the way things are done. So the things that are being done differently now. Um, open data also, raw data gives us access for new uh, opportunities to innovate. I actually ran a thing called GovHack, which was really awesome. Uh, raw data. Uh, competition, people making, you know, heaps of projects over 48 hours. You also have the opportunity to crowdsource. So this was the spike when the floods hit Queensland of the amount of people that liked the Queensland Police Facebook page. <laughs> and what the police found, and this was fascinating, it was that um, people not only were they able to get the information out, but people were able to get information to the police because, of course, they took over trying to coordinate the emergency responses. So when people were able to say, oh, 10 people say this bridge has gone down, well, that gives you a fairly good indication how to deploy your resources. So crowdsourcing gives a new type of raw data that can help government do things better and help people work with government better. So iterative, collaborative government, that's what Gov2.0 is about, uh, transparency, participation, and a citizen focus in how we do things. Now, there's a couple of things I guess we need to consider when we're looking into this space. Um, the, a couple of warnings. Um, well, actually, no, before I say that, um, it's about the government of the future is something we need to do collaboratively. If we can't create the blueprint for the future um, as a whole society, then we're going to end up running into troubles, and we do run into troubles. We can't respond um, in a quick manner, we can't respond in an effective manner, and then we end up just becoming, uh, government itself becomes um, out of date and irrelevant and uh, not able to respond to the changing needs of, so of society and of its citizens. So basically, we need to change or we're going to die. Woo! <laughs> A couple of things uh, in Australia, there's a bunch of raw data stuff happening. Uh, data ACT, which I'm actually working on, is the first actual open data platform. It does transcoding, it does APIs, it does all the cool technical stuff. DataGovAU and DataVic and um, some of the other ones are mostly just um, uh, content management systems, but they're starting to change. And, um, and this weekend, I think, is a hack fest on the New South Wales transport data as well. A couple of considerations, people think about privacy, they don't think about fish privacy. If you release the data about all of the um, flora and fauna above the ocean, and then someone goes in and fishes a particular fish to extinction, then what does that mean about privacy? You, you know, you've got these things. Geek culture, tech skills, gives us the capacity for privacy, for analysis, for doing all the cool stuff. It leads to education and empowerment, which leads to digital democracy. For, frankly, everyone here sees, sees themselves as a geek, right? 
Yeah? All right. Those who don't should because geeks are the future. So thank you for coming with me on my little journey on day deliberation. I will continue to fight the war. And please come with me. Uh, embrace your geek if you haven't yet already. Uh, free the data and let's get a better society together. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, P.O.R.